seated at his desk, computer booted up, memory stick plugged in. He moved the pointer to the My Computer icon, double clicked, waited for the external drive icon to appear, double clicked it when it did, then he waited, hoping, praying that the sisters or sisters had got it right. He didn't have long to wait, and she or they had, and it began. These are not diaries of follies and fancies as I, Harriet, and I, Henrietta MacArthur, had once thought we would keep, but rather ones that have been so despicable and obscene and of the strange beyond all reason. Jesus, Clyde muttered. Yet it wasn't until Sunday, May 8, 1932, the day after we celebrated our 12 birthdays, did we decide to write a which you shouldn't have to write about at all, even though it had started when we were but little girls. Perhaps we thought and feared because of it that Mother would discover our writings and beat us for being children, not born of her womb, but born of Satan, for only such in her eyes could write such disgusting things. But as the years slowly passed, as they always do when young, we became confident that we could keep the debauchery secret, if not to prevent it from happening again. Little did we know that Mother had known about it from the very beginning. No wonder they didn't want any family photographs in the house, Clyde said. And in the beginning it had started harmlessly, a father bathing his two young girls. The touching of our private parts a natural occurrence, and one that, as little girls of three, made us giggle and laugh and splash about, and so different to the scrubbing that Mother subjected us to. And when Mother refused to bathe us any more, for we were, after all, big girls now at five, Father still did, and we thought nothing of it, looked forward to it, knowing that he loved and cared for us. At least we thought it was love, for what else could it be? Two little girls so innocent and naive we thought everything mother and father did for us was because they loved us. When mother beat us for any indiscretion in her eyes, she said she did so because she loved us and we would thank her later in our lives for the valuable lessons she had taught us, but we never did. We never thanked father for his beatings either, but he never said we would. He too told us that he loved us, often so much that he wanted to eat us and he had tickled us and made us giggle and we were certain that he did and when, as he often did, run a finger ever so slowly on our private parts he would always tell us that he loved us and would always ask to be like what, we did, what he did but we were confused and didn't know and because we didn't know he would always tickle and make us giggle an answer that wasn't but one that brought a smile to his face the answer he wanted to hear. We had no thoughts that it wasn't proper, for we were too young to know such things. Nor did that change as we grew older. So commonplace his actions were that we thought it must be normal. Even when that finger he caressed us with penetrated us for the first time and we bled and screamed and cried, he patted our heads and reassured us, saying it was the release of the demon blood and from now on we would be safe from demonic possession and we had believed him, and Mother had done said nothing. He had tucked us into bed that night and returned several minutes later with two cups of hot chocolate that, unbeknown to us, he had added an opiate. As we had sipped, he had told us a story as he waited for the narcotic sleep he knew would quickly come. Oh my God, cried Mother, those poor, poor little girls. Sitting back in his chair, hands resting on his lap, fingers knitted, he thought out loud, what sort of deviant was their father, for Christ's sake? Molestation, physical abru abuse, brainwashing, administering drug drugs. Did this man know no boundaries? And what of their mother? Why, she's as guilty as he was for sanctioning it all with her silence and total lack of intervention. What was wrong with the bloody woman? Did he drug her too? But was she one of those women who thought sex with her husband was a disgusting thing? And she was only too happy that he was able to get his satisfaction with the twin girls. The twin she carried for nine months that maybe she didn't want at all. From one of the few copulations she had surrendered to as part of the conjugal rights her husband had insisted were his. Clive was aware that he had what he said was conjecture. 
but it struck an all too, all too familiar chord with him, thinking of his own mother as he sat staring at the monitor. Then all of a sudden another thought occurred to him, so ridiculous it was as if it was that he almost dismissed it, waving a hand like shooing a fly. He muttered, no, nah, not possible, oh way. Then, not possible, he said with mock incredulity, not possible, not possible. Of course it's possible, Clyde, old son. After all, we are dealing with the supernatural here, so anything is possible at all. So, go on, get it off your chest, spit it out, and let's see how it sounds. Following a brief pause to gather his thoughts, he said, Maybe, just maybe, and I don't know how, but somehow the sisters knew we had a common bond with each other as far as a mother who didn't want us. And again, somehow they knew I, or someone like me, would come along and buy the house. After all, there must be countless numbers of people who have had the same bond. There, what do you think about that? He asked himself. It all made perfect sense to Clyde, at least perfect sense considering the circumstances. There were, however, still lots of questions to be answered, so much to know and be lightened about. But just as he commenced reading again, there were three quick raps on the front door, and as he stood he grumbled, I hope that isn't Charlie. 